Okay, when you set up your inventory in QuickBooks, it's completely different from the way you set up your bank and all that. So your inventory are the products that you sell. You know, initially I said that every business must have something that they sell to make money. It's either you sell a product or you sell a service. They are your sources of income. So in setting up your inventory, for example, in supermarkets, you know in supermarkets, the inventory are those products, those stocks, those provisions and all that. So in your own kind of business too, you might also have an inventory that you want to track. So to track your inventory, what we will do is you will go to item and services. Here, yeah. you click item and services on this section. When you click item and services, you will see that this place is blank. Now to add new item on the system, you click item, you select new. When you select new, this is where you select the item. But from here now, we see that we have not activated our product. So let me activate the product from this system. And I'm trying to activate the inventory in the system. So to add your inventory, this is where you select the inventory you want to add. If you look, you, if you look at this, you will see it's used for goods you purchase, track as inventory and resell and all that. So here, if you want to set up opening balance for our inventory, let's assume we have certain crude now. How do you measure it? Is it in liters or barrels? Barrels. Okay. So here, the item name, here's you enter is crude oil. Now your measurement is in barrel. You can see enable units of measure. Then you click enable units of measure, single unit of measure per item. So you want to enter how we measure it. If you look at this, some business measure in each, in bonds, in case, in length, and all that. But we want to measure in barrel. You select others, you click next. So here we enter barrel. So here we can call it BR as abbreviation. Sorry, I'm coming. Let me. B, B what? B B. Okay. So you click OK. So we have activated it. Now, when you enter inventory like this, one important thing you must note is if there are quantity on hand, you need to enter the quantity on hand. So the quantity will be how many barrels do you have available? So let's assume we have 1,000 barrels available. You will enter 1,000 here. So this is like quantity on hand. You understand? That's the 1,000 barrel. Now, if you have an idea of the cost per barrel, there are people who are probably like a cost accountant that who can who are expert in calculating the cost per barrel. You can enter it here. Very very important too. So you enter the cost per barrel here. So the cost per barrel in Naira, let's assume a barrel is like uh, $20 now. Um, $20 times 300 Naira is like 6,000 Naira. So enter 6,000 Naira here. So when you sell, you attract, you, are, you take it to a sales account. That means anytime you sell a barrel, you take it to a sales account. So here you select sales here. Now, the price per barrel when you are selling may change. So that's why you have to leave this at zero. Now, it's at the point of creating invoice or receipt that you will not enter the price at which you are selling. So here, you look at it again. Now, if you look at it, 1,000 barrel multiplied by 6,000 naira per barrel will give us what? 6 million naira. That means that is the value of the quantity of barrel we have available. This is a way to measure the inventory. Now, if you're done, you click OK. Now, when you click OK here, this is a way to enter your inventory. Now, there is also a report called inventory reports. This inventory report will tell you all the crude that you have, you can see, and the cost of the crude, which will also give you the asset value, which is the cost times the um, quantity on hand. So, if you have several products, 
this is where or several items this is where you see all the list of the items now as you are selling those crude now system will also track those crude as they are being sold so it will generate what we call a stock report that will track your movements that will track uh, sorry stock movements now what has happened is that anytime you sell it will less the quantity that you sell from the quantity on hand let's assume we sold 10 barrel so what will come here is 990 tomorrow by the time we start entering sales transactions you will see the way this report will pick it so what we just did now we just did a setup of our inventory which is our crude because there's no how we can make a sale if you don't enter what you are selling so that's the reason why we need to enter this crude here very very important so that anytime we want to sell when you go to invoice when you go to invoice and select crude this is where you will sell unit of measure is already per barrel here now if you are selling to a foreign customer if you're selling to a foreign customer too, like XYZ Limited, you will see that your invoice will change to dollars. You understand? Your invoice will change to dollars. You can see it here. I'm already showing you. So any amount you enter here is going to be in dollars. For example, if you are selling to a, this particular supplier and you are selling at $50 per barrel, and it's then we ask how many barrels are we selling? We say we are selling 10 barrels. You can see the amount in dollars is $500. You understand? So, system will now multiply this by the latest exchange rates. Do you understand? And all that. I think there's a new feature in QuickBooks. The customer can't pay this invoice online. Turn on. There's a new feature in QuickBooks that makes you to pay invoice online. I'll look at this. And all that. So, this is very, very important. This we'll discuss more when we get to sales. So, what I just explained to us now is that system also provides for good sales. So anytime we sell a crude oil, and there's the way we have a report, you can come here to record the sale of your crude oil. It's very, very important too. So by selling this time now, mm -hmm. it has reduced the six uh, to reduce from no already I have not saved this. If I save it, it will reduce that one thousand barrel to now there are ninety. Yes, but I don't want to save this now. I want us to get to that sales transaction proper. Then you will see the way it works. I'm only trying to demonstrate how you need to enter this crude oil because you can, you can't without it, you can't create an invoice. Sister will tell you that there is no item selected. Like I said, every business must sell something before they can make money. So this is how yours work. So I will cancel this. When we get to sales, I will explain better. Any question on setting up inventory? Like I said before, when you get to inventory, you add new item, new, you select inventory parts. Now, listen to this place. Let me explain something very well here. This is very vital so that you won't ask which, am, which of them am I going to select and which of them am I going to leave. Now, in selecting this area, you have what we call inventory part, we have what we call inventory assembly. If you only, for your kind of business, since you only produce that inventory and sell, sorry, we only, um, what you do is you dig the inventory and you, uh, you discover and you sell. You select what? Inventory part. But if for some businesses, what they do is they bring together different raw material to produce a final product. What you do is inventory assembly. So in your own case, what you need to select here is inventory parts. When you select inventory parts, item name, you enter the name of the item, crude. How do you measure it? You select the unit of measurement. How many do you have in stock? You select the number of units that you have in stock. Then this unit of measure, quantity, yes, this quantity times the cost will give you your value. Now, sale price, if your sales price is fixed, you write it, but if it's not fixed, but most time I advise businesses to leave it at zero. It's at the point of creating invoice that you can enter the sale price, but you can sell at different price. Then under the income section, you select your sale. Once you're done, you click save and close. So that anytime you go to invoice, invoice will pick it directly.